one of one of the more well two two of the more beautiful illustrations of the Pluto archetype from the era of Uranus Pluto were Jim Morrison and and Mick Jagger people who really knew how to have a good time push the envelope uh, and bring through this um, sacred masculine energy almost like the sacred horror uh, energy on a male level but Dionysus and this is Dionysian energy by the way and Dionysus was a profoundly important god of the you know classical era because he enabled people to transcend normal consciousness and to let out let themselves out of their normal ego box and to be something else and experience you know eurythmia or euphoria or LSD or uh, transcendent states of consciousness but I see that as being deeply inwardly focused there's a there's an almost spiritual quality to that I mean if you look at the lyrics of Morrison he's really describing an inward journey more than he's describing any kind of an outward journey in the world Mick Jagger gives us a little bit more of the outward journey but uh, I'm, I, I lean toward being a Morrison fan uh, in this regard. When you have a revolution, you need something to revolt against. You can't have a very good revolution if there's no oppression to overthrow. Now, I believe that a lot of the manifestations of Pluto and Capricorn that we're going to be seeing, and we are seeing if you just open your eyes a little bit, have their roots going all the way back to the beginning of the Reagan administration. Uh, you know, for example, one of the first things that Ronald Reagan did when he got into office before he bombed anyone was to hire the Heritage Foundation to begin the abstinence-only sex indoctrination program. So they began lobbying Congress to take away sex education and teaching children uh, how to say no and signing the abstinence pledge and, you know, probably, uh, you know, God knows how many billion dollars have been spent indoctrinating people against sexuality and sensuality going back to the beginning of the Reagan era, then you have many mechanisms of control, technological and, you know, uh, governmental mechanisms of control. And it remains to be seen how things are going to go economically. I mean, there's nothing to get people to revolt if they, uh, like, uh, being unable to feed themselves when they're working and they rightfully deserve to be paid for what they do. But I think that ideologically we're becoming very boxed in and I'm noticing even simply a trend toward people wanting to be friendlier toward one another. Now, maybe it's just me, but I'm noticing more agape, brotherly love, people just wanting to talk to each other. I'm noticing being kind of Uranian, Plutonian, conjunct kind of guy and a writer. I have it in my writing house, so I embody the 60s in my writing in a uh, subtler way, I think, than the, than the 60s were. I mean, you know, we have learned something in 40 years and we've brought some refinement. And hey, we are it, so, you know, we've got to do it well. The people are more open to the viewpoints that I have. I'm just noticing this. I, now, I have practice. I've been learning how to express myself and people have got used to me and I think that maybe they're uh, not so convinced I'm so dangerous. But there's something more going on, I think, an opening up and a willingness to not have life be so damned boring. There is an archetype of the end. And I believe the archetype of the end is the projection of unprocessed individual lack of confronting death. And so what people do when they refuse to confront personal mortality is they project it onto the collective first of all. Second, those who can't conceive of the death card, that is to say, a transitional point of no return, are also more likely to take it on the level of death. And so I'm not impressed by the apocalyptic stuff. The human race will continue in whatever form. There's plenty of us and some of us will be immune to radiation and, and the plague and anthrax and all of that great stuff. Okay, in the 60s, the, a group called Red Stocking came up with a concept, the personal is political, that there's an intersection between personal and public. Or as Adrian Rich said, there's no private life that's not determined by some larger public life. And there's a point in the horoscope really where it begins in Aries at the very beginning. And by extension, all the places in the zodiac where the season changes, 
when something, the sun, the moon, or a planet, changes seasons. And we have a phase coming where many outer planets are going to change seasons and enter a cardinal sign. Capricorn in the case of Pluto, Aries in the case of Uranus, just to give two examples. And when you have these kind of large, sweeping, but deep influences going over this thing, which is called the Aries point, because it involves the very beginning of the zodiac, what you have is a phase where the news, the collective news, seems more personal and private. And when our personal experiences can be seen in a broader, larger public context. And that is one of the great keys to activating awareness and the desire to participate that was so absolutely essential to the 60s and early 70s when, by the way, there was some significant Aries Point activity, particularly around the time of Woodstock. Well, we know what we're facing environmentally right now if we bother to look. Most people don't know because they don't look. I mean, we have the planet warming up, and we have something going on that is not really being discussed openly, which is that the dioxin level is creeping up, 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 up. And so you have a thing going on with sperm counts, where the studies say that sperm counts in today's men are half what our grandfathers were. And the question is how long before we have functional sterility at that point? And how long before we start to figure out that the astonishing number of Viagra ads coming into our inboxes and penis enlargement ads coming into our inboxes have something to do with the feminizing effect or the hormone chaos of numerous numerous chemicals, the polycarbonate in this water bottle, for example, uh, and the phthalate plasticizers are, depending on who you ask, feminizing or just evoke chaos within the hormones. And so we have that to confront and that is not really being discussed. I think it's partly to blame for all of the social mayhem that's going on where people really don't understand gender or sex anymore, I think there's a chemical basis for that, which has to do with the hormone chaos created by PCBs, dioxins, lead, uh, mercury, uh, almost all heavy metals, all plastics, which are all each deadly in their own way, but all of these things act on the hormonal level. And that, of course, is the domain of Pluto and a bit of Neptune also going into Pisces. And uh, maybe you will either begin to wake up or will end up with a, you know, uh, a world akin to A Handmaid's Tale where suddenly you have a very few people who are actually capable of reproducing or capable of uh, their sexual instincts functioning. And so one whole level of my work is my writing, my photography, is designed to keep myself and others in touch with their erotic instincts and uh, sensibilities to you know, make sure that we can at least use consciousness to stay awake and to make choices to minimize the influx of these chemicals into our bodies.